Welcome to the Choose SolidWorks screencast series. My name is Neil Cook, Product Marketing Manager at SolidWorks. You know, I often get asked what makes SolidWorks so special, or what sets SolidWorks apart from the rest. And the answer is many things, but it's the subtle things that make a big difference that often get overlooked. And that's what this screencast series is all about. One of the best productivity tools, which is a joy to use, is the SolidWorks user interface. So I'd like to take 10 minutes to show you why so many people love the SOLIDWORKS user interface, why it is so easy and simple to use, and how something so simple can make a huge impact on your day. If you're a designer, chances are you're spending most of your day on a CAD system. Is it taking too much time and too many mouse clicks just to do the most simple of tasks? Are you wasting valuable time trying to remember where those commands are and always end up reading the manual? And does your CAD system get in the way of your creative design process? The SOLIDWORKS user interface helps you learn faster, get the entire team up to speed quicker, and with complete customization, streamline those design tasks and complete projects faster and with less frustration. Let's start off by taking a quick tour of the screen. First thing you'll notice is the very large graphics area. We designed the user interface to keep your focus on the model or drawing as much as possible and we'll see how we've achieved that in a moment. The main areas are the command manager across the top, the feature and property manager down the left, and the optional task pane hidden away on the right. The command manager groups together all the common commands for a particular task, such as those for sketching, modeling, or drawing, with a nice big text description. So finding a command is quick, and it just makes sense. Additional tabs may be added or removed or completely customised for a particular task or to suit a specific user's needs. Also, any icons, typically the view manipulation commands, can be added to the screen area for quick access. Let's create a simple design to see the user interface in action. Once you are familiar with the look of the icons, you can roll out the shortcut bar. This totally customisable icon palette pops up by the cursor activated by pressing the S key on the keyboard, or if you've got a mouse with more than three buttons, you can assign it to one of those. So with hardly any mouse movement, we can access the circle command and get sketching. Let's draw two completely random circles and see how easy it is to get some order to our design. We'll go straight to the shortcut bar and select center line, which snaps automatically to the centers of the circles. Now, the property manager on the left is already showing us everything there is to know about this line, and the number of ways that we can control the behaviour of the line has been filtered to only show what makes sense. And look, it's even suggesting that we should make it horizontal. Sounds like a great idea. Now if we select the line and the origin, we get a different set of options. Let's go with midpoint. Finally, if we box select these circles, we get another set of options, so we don't have to guess what we should be doing. Now this is behaving much more like what we want. So with fewer options, we can make faster choices. And of course, every engineer lacks precision, so let's add some sizes. Easily done. And finally, we'll add a box around these holes. With a large set of sketch options, such as center point rectangle, we can build the exact shape with minimal effort. And if it's a concept design, you may not want to size everything at this stage. The choice is yours. The middle mouse button rotates the view and is always on, so you don't have to move the mouse or press any buttons on the keyboard. Select the sketch and an arrow appears. Let's see what happens when you pull it. Nice. And shiny too. Not only do we get a solid without resorting to menu picks, but we also get a handy ruler to snap to, so we don't have to enter any numbers. Now if we pick one of these faces we can drag them around to our heart's content knowing that the design intent we specified at design time will always be remembered. You can even dynamically adjust the dimension sizes. With this kind of flexibility, design changes become so simple and so fast, you'll be able to do more in less time and improve the quality of your products as well. My favourite though, has to be the undo button, when I've just gone a little too crazy with all this power. Anyway, let's get on with it. Whenever you select something, a pop-up toolbar appears with the common things that you might want to do, such as edit the feature to add draft, or edit the sketch to change the shape, or in this case, because I picked a flat face, create a new sketch. 
I'll just sketch this out quickly as we've already seen how to do this. But here I can introduce another aspect of the user interface, mouse gestures. By holding the right mouse button and moving the mouse, we get a number of options. And you guessed it, it's totally customizable. It's just another way to get to your favorite commands. If we select the sketch, we get the pop-up toolbar. If that doesn't have what we need, it can be extended by clicking the right mouse button, which contains pretty much everything. Even this can be customized for each user and for each type of selection. Commands that we very rarely use can be switched off, so we only see what we want to see. We build the shapes using regions of the sketch. Job done. Let's finish this off by creating a mirror around the plane. But the shortcut bar doesn't have a mirror command and I do that a lot. No worries, we can add it now and it will be there whenever I need it. Finally, remove all burrs and sharp edges. We'll add big fillets to these bottom edges and small ones everywhere else. Again, the user interface comes to our rescue, adding all similar edges to the selection, saving a lot of clicking. And there's our design. Just make a few more modifications, just because it looks so good. We use the wheel on the mouse to zoom in and out, and you can even pre-select geometry to rotate about. A real pleasure to use. As your confidence grows, you can get even more screen space by turning off the icon descriptions on the command manager. Turn it off completely, or go completely full screen. It can be moved to any area of the screen, or undocked and moved onto another monitor, along with the property manager and the task pane, giving you even more room to maneuver the model. One tool that is invaluable is the SOLIDWORKS search tool. You want to reuse elements of previous designs, but you can't expect to remember all the designs you've done in the past and those that your colleagues have done. The search tool keeps an index of all your SOLIDWORKS files for fast graphical searching on any text within the file, be they custom properties or feature names. To add a slot to this design, we can take the whole feature or just the sketch by dragging and dropping it onto the face where we want it. If we want to copy, just hold down the control key and drag and drop onto another face. Not in the right location? Not a problem. Move it or rotate it with the triad. The freedom to do whatever you want. Let's wrap up by looking at some other nice interface tools on a more complex model. Whether you design to this level of complexity or not, you're always going to want to measure stuff. Whenever you select one or more things on screen, the measurements are displayed in the status bar. It's always on, so it's constantly giving you feedback. If you need more detailed information, bring up the measure tool. Even faster if you add it to the shortcut bar or as a mouse gesture. And that gives wonderfully clear information in callouts that you can copy and paste. You can zoom in to pick something small on screen, but then you can't see the rest of the model. It's better to use the magnifying glass and zoom in on a local area. If there's something inside the model you want to select, the Select Other command will remove faces from the model to make it easier to see what you're picking. Finally, let's see how information is organised in the Feature Manager. Design specs or other documents can be contained within the SOLIDWORKS file, so all relevant information is stored together. Features can be grouped into folders to make the tree easier to read and then may be suppressed as a group as a fast way of making configurations of parts and assemblies. Comments can be added to any item to make it clearer to yourself and other people involved in the design. And finding something in such a long list is simple. Just type it in and the list is filtered. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this quick tour of the SOLIDWORKS user interface We've put a lot of effort into its design to make it very enjoyable and rewarding to use 
and assist you in performing even the most complex tasks. We want you to look forward to using the product at the start of the day and value its role at the end of the day. For more information and to see other screencasts in this series, please go to www.solidworks.com forward slash choose or contact your local SolidWorks reseller. My name is Neil Cook. Thank you for watching.